This, this is not the video you deserve, but it's the one you need right now. Hi, I am Nikki Clements, and here's how I make a grilled cheese. So let's start with the bread. I actually really like using hamburger buns, uh, specifically the ballpark tailgating gourmet ones. They have like a fancy little slit down the middle, but they're kind of hard to find right now. So the normal ones are good, but they last like a crazy long time. Like a normal loaf of bread will be moldy before you even get it home. I haven't even opened this yet. It's already got mold on it. So these will still be good like a month later, which yeah, probably isn't very natural, but uh, it's a grilled cheese. I mean, the more processed, the better, right? Now, the first step is to butter the bread. I'm actually a margarine guy, specifically Meyer brand tub soft margarine, which has had a bit of an identity crisis. They keep switching up their packaging. Whatever. It's what's inside that counts. I'll just spread that on the two inside sides of the bun. Now for the cheese, you can use fancy cheese if you like, but nothing can really beat an American single. And this is actually gonna come in handy for a second for a very small and stupid yet kind of useful life hack. So I'll just put that on one half. So that's your basic grilled cheese. You could close it up right there. I like to add a little meat. I'm just gonna throw on some deli turkey. Ham is really good too. Three or four-ish slices is good for me. And now we can go ahead and close that on up. Now to get a proper brown on the bread, it really helps to spread some butter on the outside of the sandwich. And spread some on the top. But now we have a little bit of a problem. How do we get butter on the other side? Well, we could just flip it right into the pan and just butter the bottom side while the top side's already cooking. Kind of dangerous. I mean, we could just flip it over now. It's just gonna get butter on the mat, who really cares? Or we could take the wrapper from our cheese and place that over it. Now we can flip it over, butter the bottom side, no butter on the mat, no butter on our hands. Now we can cook it. And to do that, I'm gonna use a good old fashioned George Foreman grill. I have it leveled off, so it's not really doing the whole fat drain thing. So it's kind of more like a panini press. And there's really so many things you can cook on one of these. It's kind of incredible. Like reheating pizza on one, it's almost better than when it was fresh. It puts an awesome crisp on the crust, but keeps the rest of the bread nice and soft. And it does a great job of melting the cheese. You can just put a piece of parchment paper over top of it. And that'll prevent cheese from getting everywhere. Seriously, these things are so good for cooking all kinds of stuff. Any kind of panini press or George Foreman grill, even a waffle maker, just it helps if it has the double hinge so that there's some room for whatever you're putting in there. But yeah, just try cooking some random stuff in one. You'll probably be surprised. So get that plugged in. Now I can pick up my sandwich, place it fourth side down, and peel off that cheese wrapper. Close it on up. See how well that worked? Just fold that up, toss it away. And you could, yeah, get a piece of wax paper or something, but I mean, you already have this. It's just gonna be trash anyway, and now you've got double use out of it. And if you are using some of those fancy cheeses, sometimes they have the paper in between them. So if that's big enough to fit over the bun, or it's a good excuse to use two slices of cheese, two pieces of paper. Now I've found that uh, five minutes usually does the job to cook this just right. So while we let that cook, I just wanna take a moment and mention a little channel called Worldwide Globe Channel. Now I don't really know much about them, I'm not even sure where they're from. I'm assuming maybe the UK. I've never really been good at identifying accents. I mean, I have a Michigan accent. And you know, everyone says, well, I don't have an accent, you have an accent. But the Michigan accent is really like the most neutral the American accent can get. Unless you drive four hours north and then you're in Uper territory and that's just an entire another world. Like the only unique thing we have is Ope. 
It's like this pre-programmed sound we make whenever we bump into somebody. Like you, you walk past them and you go, oh. And most of us don't even know we do it. I went my entire life without even realizing it. The first time I saw Ope written out, I was like, what the heck is that? And then it was like the dramatic plot twist reveal at the end of the movie where I just saw my entire world unravel and that I've been using Ope my entire life. That not only did I know what Ope was, but that it was my past, present, and future. What? Anyway, Worldwide Globe Channel, they're a fan of mine, I'm a fan of them. They're just starting out their YouTube journey, so if you want to go check them out, give them some encouragement. I genuinely never expected to have this kind of effect on anyone. Uh, he made a video thanking me for subscribing to his channel. Honestly, that means as much to me as apparently I mean to them. And well, time's up for our sandwich. Oh yeah, that looks good. Cut it however you see fit, or don't. I'm gonna cut it in half. I actually really did want to make it on the uh, classic Italian bread, but it's already moldy. I was really, really bummed. Like I said, it's really good on a bun, so yep, that works. Well, my sincere thank you for watching. Once again, I am Nikki Clemens. If you're wondering, Nick is short for Nicholas, and the D stands for delicious. Anyway, I'm off to make something else. Bonus recipe, homestyle biscuits, pre-cooked sausage patties. That's it. One amazing sausage biscuit. Seriously, better than McDonald's.